Okay, so um, thanks very much for agreeing to talk to us. Would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Leah. Leah? And Julia. Julia. Yeah. Julia, um, like, ladies, what do you think is an emergency that the church you think should be talking about today? Too many, too few young people want to visit the church. And I think it's a big problem because it only, yeah, only old people are there. And yes. it's, a, that's, it's, it's not that modern. Yeah. So that's a little bit difficult. Okay. Okay. Uh, what would would you would you agree that ten thousand Christians being killed in North Nigeria is an emergency? To talk about. This is also an emergency. What about the fact that we've had ten million abortions in the UK? Would you agree that that's something that we need to talk about? Ten million. Of course. So we d we didn't know about that. Yeah. So. So, given that what what we've talked about is things that the church should be talking about, do you want to take a guess right now what they're debating in that synod? Yeah. I, take a guess. I, I think about emergency. something un, not not that important, yes. of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You, you're like, on the right track. Like, what, so, what, so, what unimportant thing do you think that they're talking about? Hmm, what I've kind heard. of coffee do they want to have, or something <laughs> yeah. like that? Or the weather? <laughs> or the weather? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I just, Good yeah. Question, yeah. So, so the thing that they're, deba they're now debating in there is the idea of whether the church can bless um, same-sex marriages. Ah, okay. Do you, what, what do you think of that? I think that's an important topic as well because it's really it's yes, it's, um, it's very important to do that because it's normal. So, yeah. do, you, do you think that okay. do, do you think that that's something as important as say the ten thousand Christians that are being killed in Nigeria? It's also important. So, do you think it's equally important? No, definitely no, not. No, not, no. Not equally important, but yeah. in the other way, in the other way, important to you that the other people are allowed to live here normally as well again. Well, that, that, I mean, the the blessings of a marriage is just a prayer for a, a gay marriage. Now, I I would suggest that that's not. Can you think of anything that's more important than that that you think the church should be talking about? Another war of as well. Many, many other. issues, right? Yeah. 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 So, the, the the reality is that the the, the church is, hasn't got its priorities right. There are there are things that are far more important than the thing that they're talking about, and that's what we're protesting here today. We're saying that you've got the wrong priorities. Like this is a topic. This is a topic, but the, there's there's many more important topics that demand your attention. This is not the most important. It's not even the second most, or the third most, or even in the top ten. And I would say not even in the top fifty of important issues the church could be talking about. We're talking about this topic as well, but not now. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, 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 as a Christian, like for us, it's a settled question. So what that means is that it's not even a question we can ask because the church has no authority to bless sin. So the church can't say, if someone said to you, right, I'm, I'm gonna go out and defraud someone now, I'm gonna steal from someone, will you pray for me? The church can't pray for someone to be successful in, in stealing or in defrauding. Yeah, so for us, gay marriage is not something that the church can bless because it's something that is a sin. You believe in love, so it's important that everyone is allowed to love. What, what, okay, let, let, let me ask you a question. It's a thing to discuss, yeah. I think, in my, in my opinion. Because yeah. love's love and, yeah, I think... Let me ask, you, you said love is love. Let me ask, if two consenting adults said that they wanted to have sex with one another but they were brother and sister of the same parents, would you think that the church should bless that? I think that's another topic. Oh, well, that's but fine. I we were talking about... Uh, but, 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 yeah. But w but would you say that love is love in that situation? I think uh, this is another topic because should the church bless it? They should. The church shouldn't bless anything about the genetic that problems. Love. When they will have children, that's an, a genetic genetic problem. Then. Right. So so, you, so you're saying that love is love doesn't apply to things like incest. I think if it curses genetic problems then it's not that good for the children so yeah that's another one it's another topic yeah no i i i think that I, I think that it goes back to this idea that the the church doesn't have the power to bless what is wrong and so it is about 
if, if someone is doing something that is wrong, the church can't bless that. So it can't bless, if I tried to steal from you, I can't go to a priest and say, will you bless me, I'm going to rob somebody. Yeah. Like if, if, if I was going to have sex with my sister, I couldn't go to the priest and say, hey, my sister is an adult, I'm an adult, we've agreed to have sex, will you bless that? The church can't bless that which is wrong, it can only bless that which is right. With the siblings, yeah, it's not allowed to, because if you love each other, it's really, really difficult, but Yeah, it's really difficult when you have uh, when you will have children together. Yeah. So that's the but, problem. But for Christians, when we decide what's right and wrong, we don't look at what culture says. We look at what the prophets and the apostles teach in Scripture, and what the church has taught for two thousand years. So many years ago. Yes, really. Yeah, and that's. I think that's a problem. Go on. So, <laughs> it could be a little the time bit modern. changes. Yeah, time changes. Does does truth change? truth no but it depends on what you see as the truth so what happens if we have truths that contradict can we both be right mm. can you explain it so if I said that the world was flat and you said that the world was round could we both be correct no but you have to prove which one is correct and which one is agreed wrong. Agreed. So when it comes to religious questions about what is true within Christianity, how do we decide what is true? Do we take a vote or do we go to the teacher, the founder of the faith, Jesus Christ, and look at his example and teaching? Maybe sometimes you have to do more than one way to look what's right and what's wrong. I agree. Um, so it's difficult to look after what the prophets have said years ago so we, we can look at scripture because we have the records of what they say again please we, we can look at the bible because okay. we have the records of what they say so we we have the bible to go from we also have the fact that the church has taught something for 2000 years mm -hmm. and in terms of for instance like m murder has it always been wrong or was there a time when murder is okay I think murder is no time for that now. What about adultery? Has there a time when adultery is okay? What's that? Cheating on your partner, ah, cheating on, on your, your wife. Oh. Okay. Uh, no, I don't think so. It, I, it, it shouldn't be right. <laughs> yeah. So, so these are equivalent to the idea of saying that. Go on. I think it's not that everyone can say it's not wrong, it's not right. I'm sorry, it's not right. Um, I think it's a problem between. The, the both of them, the couple. the couple. It's the problem of the couple and they have to talk about that and no one should tell them what's, what's right and what's wrong. They can talk about for it's them what's for them thing. right and wrong, yeah, their own thing. Yeah, I, I, I agree that, that you know, it, if, if two people do something privately in their own house, yeah. it's not my business. Yeah. But we're not talking about that here. We're talking about what the church blesses and says and, and, and prays and blesses. And, and that's something that is actually a public thing. It's not a private thing. So the, the reality is that the church can't bless something that its own teaching says is wrong. Now, in terms of, in terms of a witness, Christians obviously believe that, that certain sexual conducts cannot be legitimized. So, for example, like, you know, you, you couldn't have sex with an animal. You couldn't have sex with a child. You couldn't have sex outside of marriage. You couldn't have sex with someone else outside of marriage. But that also means you can't have sex with a, a gay partner. Because from the Christian worldview, we have to relate to Jesus. We have to relate to our sexuality through Jesus, not to Jesus through our sexuality. Do you see the difference there? I think you can put it on the same step. Okay, and and and, and the animals you can, and yeah, the, the humans, the humans. So it's like it's something totally different. Yeah. What what I I also mentioned cheating on your wife and gay sex as well. You should you shouldn't do that. That's that's all right, but I agree. I agree. There are different kinds of sin, and and some sins are worse than others. You know, like. Stealing is less bad than murder. Yes, of course. Yeah, but that's yeah? 
when it's about love. So it's for me, it's so important that. What about what about if I love someone who's not my wife? So at the end, you have to talk about with, with that topic with your wife. Well, I, 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 you can't get divorced. Yeah. I, I would say that it's that one of the reasons why Western society is struggling at the moment is because we have lost sight of the importance of keeping your word, the importance of being committed to the promises you make and to the agreements that you make. So when two people enter into marriage for Christians, this is a covenant relationship. They should do everything to uh, not get divorced or something work. like that. Basically, they, yeah. they, they make the marriage work. But, yeah. but, but if they did everything they can and uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't get better, maybe they have the chance to divorce. And they have so big and, problems, yeah. And then the church should Allowed accept that. that. Yeah. Or intercept that, yes. I, I, I would say that, that one of the reasons why our society is struggling is because we are allowing marriages to break down. Where everyone thinks that it is my own personal fulfillment that is the most important thing. But everyone pursuing their own personal fulfillment is corroding uh, the structures of society that allow society to be healthy. And the most important of all those structures is the family. And so actually, we need, to, we need to do all that we can to strengthen families rather than to allow everyone to pursue their individuality. That's right, yeah. But yeah, I think that's right. Yeah. So, you and... Have to, uh, uh, yeah. Because Christianity, Christianity is offering a completely different way of life. Yeah. We're, not, we're not liberals of the Enlightenment. We're not individualists. As Christians, we are offering a different way of being human. Uh, and, uh, and what that involves is the idea of if you make a promise, you keep it. If you make a vow, you stick to it. Like, you made that vow. That means you stick to it. You don't break it. And, and you, if you say that you're going to raise a family and be a family with someone, you stick to that. You don't move outside of that. What do you say? Um, I forgot what I say. So, sorry. Um, okay, turn it. Say again. Please. So we, we believe that we believe that it is more important to 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 build truth and virtue into your life than it is to be self fulfilled. So truth and virtue, like virtue, includes things like faithfulness, honesty, integrity. This is it's more important that you are these things than you are self-fulfilled. Now, if you can be self-fulfilled at the same time, great. But if the path to integrity and honesty and sincerity is that you aren't fulfilled, then you bear your cross and you, you take that sacrifice. And we think that society is better when people follow this path than follow the individualism of liberalism. Really, but when you're living your life with your partner and you're really not happy, you work every day to make it better, but it Or will not get better. So well, this is when this is when societies need to step in and help, because because it sounds in in those situations probably it, it, if if a situation is irrevocable, then people can separate. You know, like for instance, if a man is abusing a woman, yeah. then then the parties can separate for the protection of the woman while the man goes to prison for hitting the woman. Yeah, personally, I would stick him in a boxing ring and let him feel like what it is to be hit. Right, yeah, yeah I, that's what I would do. Yeah. I, I would take him. I, I think you know, people, men that beat women need to be put into boxing rings so they yeah. can feel what a punch feels like. But that's a... It's a discipline. Yeah, yeah, it's a discipline, and that. But it could be a reason for the wars, right? Yeah, and and then what need? Yeah, people, people, people who are a bit. Well, no, I wouldn't say it's a reason for divorce, but I, I, I would say it's a reason for people to step in and to really invest in figuring out w what is it about this man that, that he's, he can't control his temper. So after like, the prison, you would allow the man to go back to... No, no, no. Not if it wasn't safe. Only if it was safe for the woman. Okay, but how can you tell if it's safe? Well, you, it, prison should be about reforming the person. Yeah. Yeah, they should be, it should yeah. be about making, like, so someone who's doing this, that we need to get to the bottom of why, mm -hmm. and we need to, whatever issues he's going on, they need to be dealt with. But 
What about the woman when she said no, she wanted to divorce? Divorce? Well, I mean, the the thing is, for Christians, for Christians, divorce only happens in the case of adultery. Yeah. Yeah. So it's if if one person cheats on another person and breaks the covenant relationship, and then you can divorce. Women and against the man, it could be the same way. Yeah, yeah. So it's not the topic for a divorce. It, it, it would be a topic for separation, and it would be to, and it would be a topic for intervention, but it wouldn't be a topic for divorce. But they. We're not talking about abandoning the woman. Just to be clear, we're not saying just leave the woman on her own to fend for herself. I'm, I'm not saying that. Hmm. I just want to be clear about that. I'm not saying that. So if you're picturing that, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> okay. Yeah. The, the woman needs to be protected. The man needs to learn what it feels like to be punched. And then the issues need to be dealt with, but the community needs to... Because for Christians, we believe in living in community. We believe in living in community. We don't believe in the atomization of society where everyone lives as individuals. We believe as Christians that you live in community and then the community steps in to try and make the situation work. But... So the woman has to forget what happened with her and his husband. Uh, her husband, she has to forget it. Well, it, she, she doesn't have to be. She doesn't. Ha it's not like no. She like she. It, it needs to be processed. You process, but it's not about just saying oh forget it. It's not about dismissing it or saying that it's okay. The, she needs. She'll need support because she'll have been emotionally damaged as well as physically hurt. Yeah. And she'll need counseling and support to work through that. Not through that, but, but every woman is uh, an, individual, an individual, and sometimes um, there are women who can't deal with that. So then, in my opinion, the woman should be allowed to, allowed to get divorced if yeah. she wants to and can't get over it. Yeah, yeah I think I think that, that again, individual freedom. And we, if we try, we can't build a... It's a really big topic. It, it is. is huge. So yeah. you work with that and you're fine to go back to your marriage and it's really okay for you, so it's nice, but when you can't get through the physical, emotional damage, so you should be allowed to get the worst. That's I, the I, point. I, yeah. I, I would say that the reason one of the reasons why western civilization is failing at the moment is because we're trying to build our laws around this idea of individual freedom and i think that what we need to do is build our laws around the idea of strengthening the family Maybe because when we have strong families and by strong what i mean is healthy healthy families when we have a healthy family system we have a healthy society one of the reasons why people are abusive is because they come from unhealthy families in which someone in the family was abusive. Yeah, that's right. So maybe you shouldn't start at the marriage. marriage yeah, you, or you should start when the they're beginning. a child and in the beginning. Absolutely, parents. absolutely. And I believe that people should be encouraged to do lots of counseling before they get married. Yeah. Like one of the reasons why families, a lot of families aren't working is because people are just free to get married And they don't have to undergo any counseling. They don't have to undergo any course or any program in which they have to reflect like they and think. That means. Yeah, they don't do any discernment. And in Christianity, discernment is an essential part of our spirituality as Christians. You know, so we don't get married without doing a discernment. So I'm, I'm, what I guess I'm suggesting to you at bottom line is that liberalism is killing the West. Christianity can save the West. As a final one-liner, because I know, I know you. you we well, only shared a short interview, and I feel like I'm. I've sucked you into a really deep conversation, and I, I, know, I want to let you go and, and have your uh, your holiday. You know, before you go back to Germany, how long are you here for? Before you go to Germany, could you could you one? Would you like to send a postcard to the Archbishop of Canterbury telling him there's other more important things to talk about? So they're pushing trans ideology in Church of England schools. Do you know what I mean by trans ideology? And also, in, in England, people have been arrested for praying silently in their own head. Did you hear that? People have been arrested by the police for praying inside their own head 
on the streets of England. Shocking, right? You can see it on YouTube. I know it sounds unbelievable. Yeah, you can see it on YouTube. The police arrest people for, for just standing there and praying silently. And they've been arrested. That's crazy in England. Yeah, it's crazy, but it's happening. So we're, and the Archbishop of Canterbury is saying nothing about it. So we're inviting people to send him a postcard and say, hey, you should be thinking about this. So would you, if you want to, would you like to take one? You just stick a, yeah, yeah. stick a first class stamp on there. Yeah. and pop it you can even take a photo and make it part of your holiday uh, okay yeah and if if you want to learn anything more about christianity uh, i'm an evangelist and you can get in touch and if you've got any questions about the christian faith you can talk to me and i'll happily talk to you about okay. so here's my no, thank you. card thank you. take care